There are a lot of tier lists on YouTube ranking the original 151 Pokemon, but it looks like YouTube has ignored the auxiliary presence that these monsters have. With my degree of monology, I think I have enough credit to rank each Pokemon's cries. I'll be judging by the original sound produced by these Pokemon. None of that fake new shit that they produced over the years. I'm going to be looking at the true guttural cries of these monsters. Only the true effervescent sound produced by these original 151 Pokemon will be judged. Bulbasaur. <laughs> like a thief in the night, Bulbasaur robs me of my sleep. The sound bites coming out of my PC are vine whipping the shit out of my neurons. I would love to be able to catch some REM sleep, but Bulbasaur is preventing me from doing so. The decibels are not pleasing to me. I am unable to sleep because I think about how shitty this cry is. The viscosity of Bulbasaur's cry is way too thick. I put Bulbasaur into the D tier. Ivysaur. <coughs> Just like Poison Ivy, I find myself having the unfortunate symptom of having an itch, a blistering rash. Except not on my skin, but in my inner cochlea. Ivysaur does not know how to control his pitch, and the way he fluctuates his timbre is extremely disappointing. I place Ivysaur into the E tier. Venusaur's Rex is next. <coughs> Venusaur's loudness and timbre fluctuations do seem to be fleshed out a little bit better than the other two. I'm still quite disappointed in the sonic texture. Acoustic velocity isn't the worst, but it isn't the best either. It's kind of mid tier. I place Venusaur on the C tier. Charmander. <coughs> Charmander's cry is not only soothing, it's also minty. Listening to Charmander's cry is like walking into a fresh herbal garden. The timbre is consistently cyclical and doesn't falter off. Charmander's cry is like biting into a fresh lemon. The citrusy nature of the sound is superb. Charmander is B tier. Charmeleon. <coughs> Charmeleon's cry is a little more advanced than Charmander's. The timbre fluctuations are a little bit more pronounced. And with citrus, there's an addition of cilantro in there as well. The stapes within my ear are quite excited when listening to this. I place Charmeleon into the A tier. Charizard. The spatial location of Charizard's cry is excellent. When trying to calculate the sound pressure of Charizard's cry, I attempted to calculate the sound pressure in atmospheric air on a logarithmic decibel scale and my calculator exploded. Charizard's cry has excellent loudness and duration. The frequency is so fucking good. Charizard is S tier. Squirtle. The second Squirtle's cry metabolized into my stomach. I instantly knew how divine this cry was. It's like a wet queef that's been mixed down by the best DJs in the world. The amount of kilohertz is extremely pleasant. Squirtle's cry has a nice light and crisp taste. Squirtle's timbre fluctuations are incredibly handsome. I place Squirtle into the B tier. Wartortle. I am astonished at how rhythmic Wartortle's cry is. The amount of decibels here is extremely savory. War Turtle's cry has an excellent particle acceleration. I place War Turtle into the beats here. Blastoise. <laughs> this is an extremely delectable cry. It's as if the vocal cords of Blastoise were baptized by the gods of monology themselves. My ear canal quivers in excitement every time I listen to this cry. I place Blastoise into the A tier. Caterpie. Caterpie's cry sounds like a hospital alarm, and as I hate hospitals, I also in turn hate Caterpie's cry. This sound caused significant damage to my tympanic membrane. I put Caterpie's cry into the D tier. Metapod. <laughs> timbre fluctuations out the fucking wazoo. The pitch, duration, loudness, timbre, and sonic texture, all excellent. The way Metapod's cry reverberated into my skull left me very jolly and elated. This cry is very soothing and floral. I put Metapod in the B tier. Butterfree. <coughs> Although the tamper fluctuations are good here, the pitch is just way too high. You need to tone down that pitch, you semen demon. Butterfree's cry does have some nice acoustic acceleration though. I place Butterfree into the C tier. Weedle. <coughs> Weedle's cry is extremely pungent and tangy. The pitch is excellent, and I think the tamper fluctuations have nothing wrong with them. Weedle's cry is full-bodied. Extremely rich in flavor that you can physically feel in your mouth. Weedle B tier. Kakuna. <coughs> Not only does Kakuna look like a condom, listening to its cry is as safe as using contraception. This cry is reminiscent of a woodsy, earthy forest. The loudness and duration are fantastic. Kakuna goes to B tier. Beedrill. 
Although Mega Beedrill is one of my favorite Pokemon, its cry certainly isn't. This cry is rancid and putrid. The acidity of this cry is way too strong. It's overpowering. My axon terminals are fucking furious at listening to this shit. Beedrill. E-tier. Pidgey. This is the most staccato cry that we've came across so far. And if you know me, you'll know that I hate nothing more than audio that is staccato. My cochlear nerve started vomiting once it heard this disgusting sound. Don't ever be staccato. Pidgey. F-tier. Pidgeotto. <coughs> what excellent timbre fluctuations we see here. My mitochondria are cream pieing in excitement. This cry is honeyed, a sweet and candy taste. The loudness and duration is extremely adventurous and adorable. Pidgeotto, A tier. Pidgeot. <coughs> Just like gonorrhea, this cry is powerful. This Chernobyl-like cry is acrobatic and brilliant. The particle amplitude of this cry is extremely well done and in perfect equilibrium. Pidgeot's cry is zesty, giving a nice, fresh, vivid, and invigorating flavor. Pidgeot, S tier. Rattata. <coughs> Extremely staccato cry. This cry is completely devoid of timbre fluctuations. I'd rather joke myself for 10 hours straight than listen to this cry again. Rattata F tier. Radicate. <coughs> Radicate's cry is extremely staccato as well. This cry is extremely dry and unseasoned. This limp dick intrepid sound that's coming out of Radicate's mouth is an abomination. It should be illegal to have a cry this bad. Radicate F tier. Sparrow. <coughs> Tamper fluctuations are immaculate here. You can hear several auxiliary dips. The particle velocity is extremely good. I estimate it to be around 100,000 meters per second. Spiro's cries are sautéed really well. I place Spiro into the B tier. Firo. No one likes a double dipper, but when the subject is timbre, you know that shit's fire. The duration of Firo's cry is marinated so well. Firo must have been maintaining its voice box, bathing it, baptizing it in au jus, constantly bathing himself with only the finest ingredients in the world. The sonic texture of this cry is godlike. Firo goes to A tier. Ekans. The pitch here is lower than expected, which is a nice change for once. However, the loudness could be improved a little bit. Acoustic impedance or acoustic velocity can also be improved here. Some more attention to the harmonics is required. I place Ekans into the C tier. Arbok. <laughs> what an absolute roller coaster of a ride this cry is. You think it's gonna cut off and end hopelessly. At first, you assume that it's gonna be a staccato cry, but the timbre fluctuates on and the duration cock slaps you in the face. Arbok's cry is like whipped cream, it's extremely light and fluffy in texture. I find this cry to be very joyful. Arbok. A tier. Pikachu. <coughs> Pikachu's cry is sharp and piercing. The particle acceleration here is extremely high. Loudness can be improved a little bit though. The root mean square amplitude can be a little bit better. But these longitudinal waveforms are decent. Pikachu goes to C tier. Raichu. The pulse amplitude of Raichu's cry is an anomaly to physics itself. This cry is seared and smoked with excellent perfection. It's like Raichu has been cooking its voice box in the perfect amount of fat until it caramelized to perfection. Raichu's cry is the auditorial embodiment of a perfect seared grill mark. Raichu, A tier, Sandshrew. With a statistically significant amount of fervor, I can say passionately that I hate Sanshu's cry. Staccato cries and staccato moans are a complete no-no for me. I'd rather shadow clone Jutsu myself and castrate each one of my clones one by one than listen to some staccato audio. Sanshu, F tier. Sandslash. <laughs> to be honest, I would like Sandslash's cry a lot if it just had longer duration. I think the pitch and the longer duration would allow for more timbre fluctuations. This is like a quick glance at luxury. A sneak peek of edging, but unfortunately not reaching climax. Sand slash, D tier. Nidoran female. <coughs> the pitch here is slightly ear splitting. I think the timbre fluctuations are good, but the loudness is quite dulcet. This cry seems to be a little delirious to me. 
It seems Nidoran female's vocal cords are interfering with her larynx. Nidoran female E tier. Nidorina. It seems that not only did Nidoran female evolve in physicality, she also evolved the voice box. Loudness and duration are a little bit better here. I think the pitch and acoustic velocity are decent. The particle acceleration of her cry is practical. Nidorina C tier. Nido Queen. This is a well-rounded cry. Loudest isn't overpowering. The pitch is excellent. I think this acoustic velocity is done well. The speed of the sound is immaculate. The sound pressure isn't overbearing. The sinusoidal waves of Nido Queen's cry are pleasant. Nido Queen's timbre fluctuations are delicate and subtle. Nido Queen, A tier. Nido Ran male. Duration of Nidoran male's cry is a bit short. Nidoran's cry is a bit anosmic. It would be much better if it had some flavor to it. And the acoustic velocity is a bit questionable. Nidoran male, D tier. Nidorino. The loudness of Nidorino's cry is okay, but it's nothing special. The magnitude of the pulse is decent. The timbre fluctuations are a bit mediocre. And the waveforms don't really excite me all too much. Nidorino is C tier. Nido King. <laughs> Unfucking rivaled in timbre fluctuations, pitch, and loudness and duration. Let me hear that shit again. <laughs> Not to the fucking knee. Buckna. How can a cry be so orgasmic and amazing? They say stem cell research is one of the most important branches of science that we need to consider. But how intellectually bankrupt will we be if we didn't study this king's cry? Nino King's voice box has been poached by an angel liquid for more than three centuries. Nino King's cry is so tender and moist. I feel five years younger just listening to this. Nino King S tier. Clefairy. It's a shame that Clefairy's cry has a short duration because I really like the timbre fluctuations. I think the loudness is okay. Particle acceleration isn't the best. Clefairy's cry is a bit musty. Kind of like a wet gooch that's been marinating in some yoga pants. Clefairy D tier. Clefable. <coughs> this cry is pretty much the same as Clefairy's, but a little bit more timbre fluctuations. There is a slight amount of rancidness to Clefable's cries. Clefable C tier. Vulpix. <coughs> Vulpix's cry is like a perfectly round testicle. You don't see it too often. I think the loudness, duration, and pitch are all excellent. The acoustic velocity of this cry is a bit garlicky. Volpix's trachea seems to be doing wonders. Volpix's B tier. Nine Tails. <coughs> Nine Tails cry is like the perfect ejaculation. The way the sound waves travel through the air so precisely is insane. It absolutely boggles my mind, bamboozles me how well Nine Tails pharyngeal muscles work. It's like Ninetales has been secretly steeping its esophagus for centuries in holy liquid, infusing its throat with divine ingredients to bring out the flavor of its cry. Ninetales, S tier. Jigglypuff. Oh, what do you know? Another staccato cry. F tier. Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff is like that one student in class who isn't paying attention, where another student gets in trouble for not knowing what page they're on during reading time. And then Wigglytuff gets called on by the teacher and makes the same exact stake as the previous student 10 seconds earlier. Wigglytuff, F tier. Zubat. <coughs> Although I do like the timbre fluctuations of this cry, I think the pitch is a little bit too much. The cry is a bit too harsh. It's like I'm being whiplashed by a ball sack. You never want to be whiplashed by a ball sack. You want it to be gently grazed across your face. Any sort of testicle movement within the vicinity of a face should be graceful. Zubat's cry clearly isn't. Zubat, D tier. Golbat. <coughs> Golbat's cry has one of the most interesting timbre fluctuations I think so far. The loudness can be increased a little bit. I think the decibel range is something to be improved upon. The sonic texture of this cry seems to be a little bit flowery. It's reminiscent of some strong smelling tulips. This cry reminds me of a nice fresh garden. Golbat. B tier. Oddish. I do like the pitch and duration. There are some excellent timbre fluctuations here. 
However, I would increase the decibels a little bit. The sign function of this cries wavelength was quite nice. Oddish, B tier, gloom. If Daylight NBC and Chris Hansen were ever to make a video game, this is the sound they would play when the predator got caught. The tamper fluctuations here are unique. I think the loudness can be improved upon a little bit. When plotting the logarithmic function of this wavelength sound bite, I found that its derivative was a strictly decreasing function. This was nice to find out. Bloom, B tier, Vile Plume. The duration of Vile Plume's cry is exquisite. This cry has a sharp flavor, like kind of like a provolone cheese. This cry tastes a little bit fried, like it's been submerged in oil. It's totally emulsified in canola oil until the sonic texture reaches perfect golden crisp. Vile Plume A tier, Paris. Whenever I hear Paris's cry, my macrophages start jizzing in fear. The loudness and duration are so spooky, it just sends shivers down my spine. This sound is synonymous with death. The sonic texture here is extremely gamey. Listening to this cry is like biting into a 30 year old musty, fermented fruit leather. Paris E tier. Parasect. Parasect's cry is just like Paris's, except now the Armageddon has arrived. I really dislike how this cry inseminates my eardrums. The pitch and timbre fluctuations are unpleasant to say the least. Parasect. E tier. Venonat. The pitch is a bit harsh, but I do like the timbre fluctuations here. Loudness is good. The sonic texture does have nice fragrancy. It smells quite perfumed. Acoustic velocity is a bit tangy, which is playful on the palate. Venonat B tier. Venomoth. Duration loudness and timbre fluctuations are good here, but I think the pitch holds this cry back. Sonic texture is mediocre. The sinusoidal wavelengths aren't anything to be proud of. Venomoth C tier. Diglett. Diglett's cry sounds like a giggle, followed by a fart. I guess it's kind of cute. The loudness can be improved upon. This cry reminds me of like a mediocre bouquet. Not the most elegant flowers in the world, but something you'll make do. Diglett, C tier, Doug Trio. <coughs> Doug Trio's cry kind of sounds like a slot machine gone AWOL. Like some sentient AI realizing that someone is winning way too much money and the casino might be in trouble. So it lets out this guttural sound to scare off the winner. The timbre fluctuations are mediocre. And I'm not too pleased with the sonic texture. Doug Trio. D tier. Meowth. Short in duration, I think Meowth's cry is not that good. I find the sonic texture to be a little bit musty and nauseating. The sound doesn't really metabolize well into my body. Meowth. D tier. Persian. The timbre fluctuations and duration are excellent, but that pitch is extremely daunting. That pitch is so volatile, my mitochondria are hiding in fear. The sonic texture of this cry is extremely acidic. The pH of these vocal wavelengths are definitely not balanced. Persian. D tier. Psyduck. The loudness of Psyduck's cry is okay. The sonic texture is a bit unripe. It's as if the wavelengths were kind of picked at too early of a stage. It appears that Psyduck's inferior constrictor muscle is a bit underdeveloped, and that's why we see these kind of timbre fluctuations within this cry. Psyduck C tier, Golduck. I kind of wish this cry was a little bit louder. I think the acoustic velocity is okay. I don't think Golduck's superior constrictor muscle is doing a good job, but then again, neither is mine, as you can hear that voice crack. Sound pressure of this cry is mediocre. Golduck C tier. Main key. I actually do like the timbre fluctuations of this cry. The sonic texture is nice and assertive. The wavelengths aren't pussing out midway, they're going full on. Acoustic velocity here is delicate and soothing. Main key B tier. Prime ape. Prime Ape's cry adds a little twist at the end, like a little short queef, which I do like. The sonic texture is thorough and evocative. The wavelengths of this cry seem to be very heavy and intoxicating. Prime Ape, B tier, 
Growlithe. Growlithe's Cry is like a movie that ended too quickly. I think the loudness and pitch are good, but the duration is a little bit lacking. Growlithe, C tier. Arcanine. Now there's some good sinusoidal dips. Boy, do I love some good timbre fluctuations. And Arcanine brings in the fucking heat. This cry absolutely moistens my earlobes. Arcanine, B tier. Polywag. Like a short vacation, Polywag's cry is a bit disappointing. It's like booking just one overnight stay at a hotel. There isn't much to go off of, and not much fun to be had. Polywag, B tier, Polywhirl. <coughs> you staccato son of a bitch. Polywhirl F tier, Polywrath. <coughs> well, that cry certainly isn't wrathy at all. Polywrath's cry is like a massive ego chad who thinks he's badass but behind closed doors has a micro penis, and not even the good kind of a micro penis, the bad kind. Polyrath, E tier, Abra. <laughs> Abra's cry sounds like someone took a massive diarrhea and remixed it in Ableton. And I'm not talking about some weak poop droplets, this was a massive dump. The sonic texture is excellent here. Abra, B tier, Kadabra. Kadabra's cry sounds like an anal explosion of feces. This time remix in FL Studio. Kadabra, B tier, Alakazam. <laughs> Alakazam's cry sounds like one of those silent farts. You know the ones that go <sighs> These type of farts seem to be the best out of all kinds. They typically smell the best. They have the best acoustic velocity and particle acceleration. And I think this cry does as well. Alakazam, A tier. Machop. The pitch on this cry is a little bit too high. I think Machop is going a little bit overboard. Timbre fluctuations are pretty mediocre. This cry is kind of like stale bread. You would eat it in the case of emergency or if you were really hungry. But otherwise, it's not really that good. Machop, D tier, Machoke. I do taste a little bit of cinnamon within this cry. It is quite nice. I think the timbre fluctuations are decent as well. I think the temperature could be a little bit better. This cry seems a little bit lukewarm to me. Machoke, C tier. Machamp. <laughs> Duration is good. Kind of like a full bodied massage. However, the flavor of this cry is a little bit basic. Nothing particularly wrong with it, but it's just not a mix up. Machamp, C tier. Bell Sprout. <laughs> Staccato nose is pissing me off. I do like the gargleness though. There's no better sound on earth than the sound of deep throating a toothbrush. And that's what Bell Sprout is trying to do. Bell Sprout, E tier, Weepin' Bell. <laughs> Weepin' Bell's cry sounds like the auditory version of a myocardial infarction. The pitch is just not pleasant. I feel like my blood pressure just rose a little bit. Weepin' Bell, E tier, Victory Bell. <laughs> there we fucking go. Victory Bell coming in fucking hot with the big ass meat. This cry is jam packed with flavor. Like Guy Fieri, it's Flavor Town, baby. These timbre fluctuations are pristine. Victory Bell, A tier, Tentacool. <laughs> like hentai tentacles themselves, I find that this cry titillates my cochlea very well. Tentacles cry fondles my dendrites and my axons very pleasantly. Tentacle, B tier, Tentacruel. <laughs> Tentacruel's cry is like a hentai tentacle, but it's been charred, grilled, and roasted to perfection with a delightfully delectable, darkened, smoky flavor. Tentacruel, A tier. Geodude. <coughs> Geodude's cry is like a nice, well-maintained pube. It's not something you see every day, so when you do look at it and notice it, you know to appreciate it. Geodude, B tier. Graveler. <coughs> These fluctuations in timbre from Graveler are extremely moist. Graveler's cry seems to be breaded in a delicious breadcrumb mixture and encoded in a delectable batter before being fried to a delicious golden crisp. Graveler, A tier, Golem. <coughs> Golem's cry sounds like a queef that's been a little bit too exacerbated. The timbre fluctuations can be improved upon. I don't think they're too good, but they're not horrible or wretched. In terms of decibels, I think the amount can be improved. 
Golem C tier. Ponyta. I do really like the timbre fluctuations here. The pitch isn't the best thing in the world, but it is definitely. The sonic texture of this cry is a bit woody. Ponyta, B tier, Rapidash. <laughs> Similar to a nice healthy zygote, this cry puts a smile on my face. The timbre fluctuations aren't too overzealous, and I think the loudness and duration are pristine. Rapidash, A tier, Slowpoke. <laughs> F tier, Slowbro. Slowbo's cry reminds me of a hernia. I don't think the timbre fluctuations are that good here. However, the sound and duration are decent. Slowbro, C tier, Magnemite. <laughs> this cry does have some good bass to it. I think the timbre fluctuations are good enough. This cry isn't sweeping me off my feet, but I'm not too upset by it, and it's pretty good. Magnemite, C tier. Magneton. This cry has extremely fucking good duration. I do like the zestiness of this sonic texture. I'm not the biggest orange fan in the world, but I do like a little bit of orange peel in my auxiliary dishes. Magneton. B tier. Farfetched. This cry is staccato, but I do like the timbre fluctuations. It's an extremely low IQ play to not have your duration of your cry longer. This cry tastes like cough syrup. It's disgusting. Farfetched. E tier. Doduo. <coughs> Doduo's cry sounds like a SDS Max demolition hammer concrete drilling tool. This cry is pretty heavy duty and provides a lot of amplitude. Although the high powered performance is masked by the large, high pitch. Doduo. C tier. Dodrio. The little queef burp at the end is extremely pleasant. It appears Dodrio's voice box has been broiled for years in a high quality radiation oven built by CERN, manufacturing a cry so crispy, so tender in the inside. Dodrio, B tier, seal. This sea lion is full of semen and is absolutely no joke. That protruding horn on the top of its head isn't for fashion. It allows for Seal to ejaculate its cry throughout the air, defying space-time itself. Seal spends most of its time on icebergs because if it spent time on the Earth, it would cause massive earthquakes with its cry. Seal, A tier, Dugong. On January 26th of the year 1700, an earthquake occurred along the Cascadia subduction zone with an estimated moment magnitude of 8.7 to 9.2. This was no act of God. This megathrust earthquake involving the Juan de Fuca plate from mid-Vancouver Island was caused by none other than Dugong. Dugong, A tier, Grimer. It baffles me how Grimer thinks it can get away with this staccato ass cry. Grimer, F tier, Muck. Muck's cry sounds like if a bird hit itself in its shin with a razor scooter. This cry is a little bit bland. The sonic texture seems a little bit flustered here. Muck, C tier, Shelder. Make no mistake about this bivalve Pokemon. That shell is not only for protection, but also funnels the wavelengths of its cry to a specific area in front of it. Doing so provides an excellent auxiliary experience for the listener. Shelder, B tier. Cloister. Like a guitar riff from Jesus himself, Cloister is able to produce a musical composition of the highest quality. Cloister's cry pierces your soul as if it was shooting spikes. The acoustic velocity is so fast, it's like Cloister aqua jetted the wavelengths into my ear. Cloister, A tier. Ghastly. I attempted to perform a Roman numeral analysis on Gasly's cry. Unfortunately, I failed because Gasly's timbre fluctuations are too fucking good. The scale degrees and root note are out of this world. Gasly, A tier. Haunter. Haunter's cry sounds like someone ate a shit ton of Taco Bell, set up their mic in their bathroom next to their toilet, planted a claymore in a bouncing Betty, and blew the shit out of their asshole making a feces concoction, and then tweaking it here and there in Adobe Audition. 
Answer. D tier. Gengar. Gengar's cry sounds like some weak flatulence, but only the rectum and the muscles that are in the intestines are not strong enough to pressurize the flatus. Because of this, the act of passing flatus doesn't have enough volume or frequency. This cry is also quite feculent. I'm willing to bet that Gengar might be lactose intolerant. Gengar, D tier, Onyx. According to history, the Bridge of the Gods was a natural dam created by the Bonneville Slide, which was a major landslide that dammed the Columbia River. However, the Bonneville Slide wasn't the creator of this natural dam in Oregon. In fact, it was Onyx's cry. Onyx, A tier. Drowsy. There's a lot to unpack here with this cry. Drowsy is able to produce a sound that is both melancholic and joyful at the same time. This paradox has plagued the minds of scientists everywhere around the world. It rivals even the bootstrap paradox or the paradox of Achilles and the tortoise. The little flatulence you hear at the end of Drowsy's cry. The feculent odor produced is amazing. I suspect Drowsy has celiac disease. Drowsy, A tier, Hypno. According to the protopsychological four temperament theory, there are four fundamental personality types, sanguine, choleric, melancholic, and phlegmatic. Somehow Hypno synthesized all of these into one cry. Listening to Hypno's cry is like having pain Shinra Tensei or Cochlea. Hypno's cry is not only enthusiastic and active, it's also decisive and goal-oriented, not to mention a deep thinker. This cry is relaxing and easygoing. Hypno, A tier. Krabby. The Commonwealth Games is an international multi-sport event involving athletes from the Commonwealth of Nations. Krabby has never been invited to such an event, and with good reason. If Krabby were to participate in any archery, badminton, basketball, beach, volleyball, boxing, cycling, diving, gymnastics, hockey, judo, netball, or rowing, Krabby would fucking destroy the competition, and when it celebrated, its cry would rock the fucking world. Krabby's cry would menstruate the tectonic plates, creating massive tsunamis, and destroying ecosystems. Krabby, A tier. Kingler. Like an expert professional world champion table tennis player, Kingler is able to chop and alter its audio wavelengths, changing its trajectory. Kingler produces a shit ton of topspin on its cry, it's fucking nuts. The Table Tennis Association is massively concerned with how overpowered Kingler is. They replaced the 38mm balls with 40mm ones to increase the ball's resistance to Kingler's audio wavelengths. Kingler, A tier. Voltorb. <laughs> Prometheus, the titan god of fire, is credited with the creation of humanity from clay, who defied the gods by stealing fire and giving it to humanity as civilization. Zeus punished him for betraying the gods by bounding him to a rock and having an eagle eat his liver and then having the liver grow back every night to only be eaten again the next day with this endless cycle of liver eating. People often forget that another punishment was listening to Voltorb's cry. Voltorb's cry would eat up Prometheus' ears and then they would heal overnight only to be destroyed again the next day. Voltorb, E tier, Electrode. The first time Electrode Volt tackled the shit out of my neurons, I had an epiphany. According to Greek mythology, Lycaon, the king of Arcadia, sacrificed a boy to Zeus, which appalled Zeus so he unleashed a deluge. However, it wasn't because of Lycaon that Zeus was angry, it's because of Electrode's cry. Electrode's cry is so wretched that Zeus decided to flood the earth. Electrode, E tier, execute. Have you ever heard a Las Vegas slot machine ejaculate? Well, look no further. Even the Pelasgians would celebrate this sound. Execute. B tier. Executor. When you hear this sound, you know shit is going down. And I'm not talking about the Earth's surface. We're going past the crust, the mantle, the outer core, all the way to the inner core. 
The sediment, dissolved chemicals, rock and fossils within this cry are insane. The radioactive isotopes within this cry are immaculate. Executor. B tier. Cubone. Cubone's cry has a little bit of aluminum flavor to it. It's quite metallic. And it's the third most abundant cry on the earth. However, it's also light and soft. You can use Cubone's cry to create many things, from bicycles to spacecrafts. Cubone, B tier, Marowak. The duration of Marowak's cry is like a Jujutsu Kaisen episode, not long enough. Similar to a short fallopian tube, Marowak's cry needs to be much longer. The fluidity and flow of this cry would be much better if the duration was improved. Marowak, D tier. Hitmon Lee. The density of this cry is a bit mediocre. Hitmon Lee seems to be a little bit iron deficient. The radius of this audio is not as large as I would hope it to be. Hitmon Lee, D tier. Hitmon Chan. According to scientists, thorium is a weakly radioactive metallic chemical element. Well, I've got some good news. Hitmon Chan is jam packed with this shit. Whenever Hitmonchan releases its cry into the air, the air itself tarnishes black, forming thorium dioxide. This cry has a plus 4 oxidation state and is quite electropositive. Hitmonchan, A tier, lick a tongue. That tongue is not for show. Lick a tongue is the real deal. That big ass muscle organ that you see is not only for mastication, it has the power to rewrite history itself. Altering atoms in the air. Lickitung has an advanced lingual septum, which allows it to produce such heavenly sounds. The only downside is the duration is a little bit on the shorter side. Lickitung, B tier, coughing. This is a cry that is produced when you jock too hard. Perhaps coughing's mandible is a little bit deformed. Maybe its midline articulation, where its bones are joined by the fibrocartilage, are a little bit messed up. Coughing, D tier, wheezing. This eructation of a cry reminds me of fermented starch sugars. The polysaccharides in this cry are decently placed, and the sonic texture seems to be granulated a little bit. Wheezing, C tier, Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn's cry seems to be steeped with the starch source, then fermented with yeast. The malting process within this cry was done excellently. I also think the mashing is pretty good. Rhyhorn, B tier, Rhydon. Rhydon's cry has been barrel aged to perfection. This lambic cry has been fully fermented in wood. Rhydon seems to have also applied some Kieselger filters. This stabilizes the flavor of its cry, giving it a polished shine and brilliance. Rhydon, A tier, Chansey. Chansey does an excellent job at fertilizing my earlobes. The way the sound waves impregnate my brain is impressive. Chansey is able to fuse the gametes of its cry, making pollination look like a breeze. This angiospermic audio is a force to be reckoned with. Chansey, A tier, Tangela. Tangela is able to copulate its audio really well. Only thing that's lacking here is its duration. Tinkle's cry is able to traverse the air, pinpointing the exact locations of someone's ears. Just like a spermatozoan finding its way to an oocyte, Tangela, B tier, Kangaskhan. <coughs> Kangaskhan's cry packs some real Genghis Khan power. In the year 1215, Genghis captured the Jin capital of Zongdu, modern day Beijing. The Jin dynasty then collapsed in 1234. But this was not Genghis Khan's accomplishment. This was Genghis Khan's cry. This cry can put the fear in any soldier. Genghis Khan, B tier. Horsey. The duration of this cry kinda sucks. It is able to implant itself into an endometrium though. I don't think it will be able to implant itself in the uterine wall, however. This cry might result in an ectopic pregnancy. Horsey, C tier. Cedra. Not only is this cry staccato, its pH is way too low. The acidity is blinding and overpowering. The molar concentration of hydrogen ions in this cry really pisses me off. 
Cedra, D tier, Goldeen. Goldeen's cry sounds like it's been distilled. It doesn't sound natural. Although some impurities may have been removed, I think it removed a little too much. Perhaps it would have been better if reverse osmosis was used or carbon filtering. There's a lot of trace contaminants still within this cry. Goldeen, D tier, Seeking. I looked at Seeking's cry under a fluorescent microscope and I was surprised. The sound particles from Seeking's cry didn't have a straight trajectory. The reflected radiation from the angles predicted of the law of reflection were amazing. Seeking, A tier, Star U. Star U produces some massive echinodermal power. Star U makes all other deuterostomes look like total bitches. Star U's water vascular system is so advanced it's able to produce a sound this good. Star U, A tier, Star Me. Star Me only uses the finest calcium carbonite in the world. This cry is supernatural. The way these auditory wavelengths tessellate the air is amazing. Star Me's sphincters are so advanced it's able to produce a sound this good. Star Me probably doesn't even produce any nitrogenous waste products. Ammonia is out of the question. It just produces amazing cries. Star Me, A tier, Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime's cry sounds like a bowling ball, except it's not a circle, sphere, it's an oval. And instead of having three anal holes in the ball, there's four of them. This makes it hard to bowl with it and a little bit awkward. The rev rate of Mr. Mime's cry is extremely low. There's not enough friction between its cry and the air, so it can't curve to your ears. The optimal axis rotation of this cry is out of whack. Mr. Mime, D tier, Scyther. The radius of gyration of this cry is mediocre at best. Scyther's cry has shit inertia. Also, the center of mass seems to be out of whack and out of place. The distribution of cross-sectional area within this cry around a centroidal axis is pretty average. Scyther, C tier, Jinx. Listen to the song of my people. Audio so divine you can taste it. Jinx's cry is ambrosial and aromatic. Sonic texture that is powerful but not too overpowering. This cry is so silky and flaky. The succulent acoustic velocity makes my heart melt. The loudness and duration are a perfect combination, just like peanut butter and jelly. It's as if Jinx's cry was marinated in Jesus' tears for three centuries, then lightly deep fried to a golden crisp. We will never be able to overcome entropy, but Jinx proves that that might not be the case. Its cry can shift the space-time continuum. Jinx, S-tier, Electabuzz. Electabuzz makes discharging look super easy. They say Electabuzz can cause major blackouts in cities, and it's probably due to its cry. Carl Jung once said, Who looks outside, dreams. Who looks inside, awakes. He was referring to none other than Electabuzz. Electabuzz's cry is like a military siege. During the Napoleonic era, Electabuzz's cries were used instead of powerful cannons, as Electabuzz's cry did more damage. Electabuzz, A tier, Magmar. The duration of Magmar's cry is a bit short, but the timbres are fluctuating quite nicely. Magmar's cry seems to be monotonically decreasing on its interval. This concave function of a cry is decent, but nothing too special. Magmar, C tier, Pinsir. Pinsir's cry seems to be a triangle wave. The peak-to-peak -peak amplitude is not that good, however. Also, the displacement of this cry is pretty shit. The vector is quite disappointing. Pinsir. D tier. Tauros. The hyperbolic metric measurements of Tauros's cry are average. This cry does seem to be pretty congruent with others in the C tier. This cry does seem to be a little bit trapezoidal. Tauros. C tier. Magikarp. Magikarp's gills must have been crafted by Zeus himself. Magikarp must have an extremely advanced capillary network. It's able to exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen with absolute ease. The sonic texture and amplitude are astonishing. The closed loop circulatory system of Magikarp allows it to produce such a good cry. Magikarp, A tier, Gyarados. 
The way Gyarados' cry urinates into my ears is godlike. This is Eurysis taken to the next level. The sonic texture and loudness are perfect. These wavelengths are able to excrete into the environment with extreme precision. Gyarados, A tier, Lapras. The fluidity of Lapras' cry isn't the best. I think the viscosity could be a little bit better. The amount of Pascal's of force in Lapras's cry is average. Lapras, C tier. Ditto. It looks like the thrusting force of Ditto's cry receives some diminished returns. The force density of this cry isn't that large. Ditto's cry is a bit rancid and pungent. Ditto, B e tier, EV. Not only does Eevee's cry have some structural dampness, it also has some moisture dampness as well. There is a statistically significant amount of water vapor present in this cry. The particles also seem to go under remission. Eevee, B tier, Vaporeon. In ancient mythology, the ruler of the universe, Uranus, was castrated by his son, Cronus. Uranus's testicles were thrown into the sea, producing a white foam from which the goddess Aphrodite emerged. The weapon used to castrate Uranus was none other than Vaporeon's cry. Vaporeon, A tier, Jolteon. Helios, the god and personification of the sun, had a horse drawn chariot that it would use to propel through the sky. Like a truck powered by diesel fuel, those horses were powered by Jolteon's cry. Jolteon's cry has an exceptional amount of calories. Jolteon, A tier, Flareon. The Gibbs free energy of Flareon's cry is abysmal. However, the timbre fluctuations and loudness make up for it. This cry contains a lot of organic acids and ethanol. It also has a minty aroma. Flareon, B tier, Porygon. <coughs> the amount of ATP that Porygon's cry is able to produce is fucking insane. My macrophages are cream pieing with joy right now. The disaccharides provide excellent flavor. Porygon's cry is an excellent source of nutrition. Porygon, A tier. Ammonite. <laughs> Ammonite's cry seems to have a large amount of ester fatty acids. It's not the healthiest cry to consume. This cry is kind of like beeswax. It's extremely waxy. I can detect some palmitrate and some oleate esters. Ammonite, C tier. Amistar. <laughs> I went ahead and did some gas chromatography on Amistar's cry to find out any compounds that I can analyze. I was left pretty disappointed. The vapor pressure of this cry is pretty shit. Amistar, D tier. Kabuto. <laughs> Kabuto's cry reminds me of a hard downpour. The relative humidity of this cry is decent. This cry also has a relatively high wet bulb temperature. Kabuto, C tier. Kabutops. <laughs> Kabutops' cry seems a little cirrostratus. I can detect some ice crystals within there. The acoustic velocity and sound texture are decent. Kabutops, B tier, Aerodactyl. <coughs> the way Aerodactyl's cry precipitates is amazing. Its wavelengths impregnate my ears so well. This cry is like a perfect orthostratus cloud. Aerodactyl is jam-packed with macronutrients with an excellent combination of carbohydrates and proteins. Aerodactyl, A tier, Snorlax. <coughs> Fuck. F. Articuno. <laughs> Flatulence at the end is perfect. There's a healthy amount of essential fatty acids within here. This cry contains a lot of healthy triglycerides. This cry is like a beautiful cumulonimbus cloud. Articuno. A tier. Zapdos. <laughs> Zapdos's cry is a little bit fruity. I can taste a faint amount of paprika within there, which is a good little spice to add. This cry is lightly pan seared. Caramelized in butter to really bring out the sonic texture. Zapdos, A tier. Moltres. <laughs> Moltres' cry has been glazed really well. There is also a little bit of fermentation going on. This cry is sweet and savory at the same time. The auditory wavelengths are sticky but succulent and are full of juice and flavor. Moltres, A tier. Dratini. <laughs> the ribosomes in this cry are average in length. This seems like a dish that's unfinished and unseasoned. Like a chef and chopped, ran out of time, and didn't get to finish their dish. This cry seems incomplete to me. Dratini. D tier. 
Dragonair. Dragonair's cry seems to be more fleshed out. A lot of quality and time and care went into this cry. This cry is gooey like a jelly donut, but also hearty like a warm soup. I can tell that this cry was baked, so it has a crispy outer coating. Dragonair. A tier. Dragonite. Like a perfectly crafted fleshlight, Dragonite's cry is amazing. This cry has been braised to perfection. Every December, in ancient Rome, during the festival of Saturnalia, not only did they feast, do role reversals, free speech, and gift giving, they also listened to Dragonite's cry. This cry was sautéed with the perfect amount of fat. Listening to this cry may give you heartburn. Dragonite, S tier, Mewtwo. One of the most iconic sounds in all of human history. Mewtwo's cry has the power to restructure anyone's DNA. Listening to this changes your DNA structure from a double helix to a triple helix. There are four nitrogen containing nucleobases within each nucleotide. Cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. Well, with this cry, Mewtwo just created another one, a fifth nucleobase. Mewtwozine. My mitochondria are orgasming from this cry in excitement. Mewtwo, S tier. Mew. The ancestor of all Pokemon. Scientists say that Mew contains the genetic codes for all Pokemon. The DNA supercoiling of this cry is unrivaled. Even Zeus would shiver at the sound of this cry. The sugar phosphate backbone of this cry is incredibly strong. The sonic texture is extremely zesty and fresh. It's like this cry was oven roasted in the sun and then charred to perfection. This cry is so savory, it defies physics. Mew S tier. So that's the full original 151 Pokemon cry tier list.